Good morning, everyone. Good I am morning. very happy to share a few words with you by God's grace. And uh, today we do have this subject that is uh, uh, one of the statements that uh, represents the greatest reality of the world. Sin changed the world. Since uh, the Creator wanted to, for us as a designer, the best, we chose a different direction. And today what we have to do is just to patch, to patch our clothes. What we, we, we try to save the world in the present state as we are. But uh, definitely the intention of the Lord was uh, stipulated in Genesis chapter uh, 1 verse 31 where he says, And God saw everything that he has ma had made, and behold, it was what? Very good. So meaning that in the act of creation, God did have the best intentions for humanity. There was nothing faulty in the act of creation for humanity. God has proven that he has the best intentions for the happiness and joy of humanity. Now, Luke chapter 11, 11 uh, clarifies that, that the act of creation, it is indeed um, an act in which God involves all his heart and love for humanity. If a son shall ask bread, of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? You see, so that shows that God uh, is good. And the act, the intent of God through creation is to make us happy. Love creates. Hatred destroys. So this is the best intention that God has for humanity. And Jesus Christ says, hey, you are evil people. You are bad people and are capable to give good gifts to your children, correct? Imagine God who is not evil. God is good. And the more, I mean, beyond your comprehension, God has given humanity the best intentions of him. Unfortunately, sin changed the world. And the course of humanity... Uh, we have separated ourselves and went so far from God that even we lost track of who God is. Today's society, the world today, does not recognize God anymore. And I don't want, I don't want to be in, in this world. I don't want to live here. Do you want to live here? I don't think it's worth it. Now, one of the greatest revelations of the scripture when we uh, discuss about uh, lifestyles it's found in Psalm 104, verse 14. David, uh, as a psalmist and prophet and a man of God, uh, gives us a bliss of how was in the beginning. He caused to, uh, the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of men, that he may bring forth food out of the earth. So David understands clearly the fact that this was God's original intent. Is that true? that the, the, the earth will produce food. Now, unfortunately, the world is uh, left these ideal principles of back to Eden. And uh, it took 6,000 years for humanity to decide that it was better the way that God has created the world. It's better to have a vegetarian lifestyle than to eat a meat and so on and so forth. In fact, um, the American Institute for Cancer Research says that uh, con uh, researchers continue to find evidence that eating too much red meat is probably linked to cancer. Um, uh, healthful vegetarian diets are protective against cancer. Uh, this is in America, and Canadians uh, have the same uh, concept. Nutritional needs can be met uh, by most well-planted uh, plant vegetarian diets. So you see, the world goes back to original. The world goes back to principles that God have, create, have created for us. Uh, uh, Leo Tolstoy, it's a Russian thinker, uh, had something to say about the lifestyle and especially eating uh, habits. If a man aspires towards a righteous life, his first act of abstinence is from injury to animals. And I mean, this guy was uh, born in a place where people were forbidden to, to worship God. Okay, a communist came a little bit later than uh, him. However, his statement is pretty, pretty powerful. But, but uh, in reality, this statement can coincide with a scripture statement. Uh, let me read something from the Bible this time. A righteous man regards the life of his beasts, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. So 
the Bible speaks the same language like this gentleman. You know, they, okay, he comes to the conclusion where the, 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 the and, and he says God was right when he created the world to have a specific lifestyle. Now, when we go farther on civil disobedience, he says a man can live and be healthy without killing animals for food. Therefore, if he eats meat, he participates in taking animal life merely for the sake of his appetite, and to act so is immoral. This is a very interesting statement, you know, because for the first time, he doesn't, uh, uh, he doesn't approach only the, the, the health part of uh, the way that we eat, but he approaches the issue of morality, how moral he is to kill in order to eat. Uh, you heard about uh, Mahatma Gandhi, is the guy that is, uh, released, I mean, delivered India without one bullet. And uh, obviously he made a statement that I think that is very, very um, uh, well taken by, by modern society. And he says uh, he took for granted uh, uh, non-injury living beings, vegetarianism, he says, and fasting for self-purification, liberator of India. But in London, in London, he was invited in a um, um, uh, uh, vegetarian society in 1931, and uh, he makes uh, a statement, I do not regard flesh food as necessary for us at any stage and under any clime in which it is possible for human beings ordinarily to live. I hold flesh food to be unsuited to our species. We err, we err in copying the lower animal world if we are superior to it. So if we become like the beasts and we act like them, we cannot claim that we are superior. Now, obviously, Benjamin Franklin, we go from India uh, to, uh, to America. He called eating meat, meat unprovoked murder. Benjamin Franklin says uh, eating meat is unprovoked murder. I don't know exactly if you uh, saw, I mean, have ever considered what the great men of this world have said about the lifestyle and uh, vegetarianism, generally speaking. Now, I'm going to John Wesley. You heard about John Wesley. He says, uh, Dr. Cheney advised me to leave them wine and flesh, to abandon wine and flesh, or meat eating, uh, assuring me, till you do, you will never be free from fevers. And since I have taken his advice, I have been free, blessed God, from all bodily disorders. So here are people that bring not only uh, a, a testimony, but they bring conviction that a lifestyle, the way that we eat, the way that we sleep, the way that we work, it does impact the quality of our life and the quality of life around us. Now we go to Tesla, Nikola's Tesla. It's one of the most brilliant minds that disappeared because the great oligarchs of this world stole from him, stolen from him the best of his acquisitions. In regard to uh, diet and lifestyle, he says, oh, on general principles, the raising of cattle as a means of providing food is objectable. Oh, objectionable. It is certainly preferable to rice vegetable, and I think, therefore, that vegetarianism is a commendable departure from the established barbarian habit, meaning to kill, to eat. And uh, if you wish, look at the, the type of, uh, the type of um, uh, necessary grain you have in order to uh, raise chicken, eggs, turkey, pork, beef, so on and so forth. I mean, you, you have so much, if you look to the, uh, to the beef area, you have so much grain that you can fill the entire uh, uh, city of Roanoke if you, if you change. Instead of raising animals to eat animals, you give the grains to the people and they will be healthier. Now, when we go back to Tesla, he says that we can subsist, uh, that we can subsist on plant food and perform our work even to advantage. It is not a theory, but a well-demonstrated fact. Many races living almost exclusively, oh, exclusively on vegetables are of superior physic and strength. And uh, we go back to uh, the same uh, United States dietary guidelines, uh, guidelines, and they say very clearly that vegetarianism of, of all types can achieve recommended nutrient intakes through careful selection of food. So you can be vegetarian and you can be healthy. Uh, as well, Canada, the same thing. It is uh, in the position of United States. It is the position of the American Diet uh, Dietetic Association uh, 
of Canada uh, that appropriately planned vegetarian diets are healthful, nutrition, uh, nutritionally adequate, and provide health benefits in the prevention and treatment of certain diseases. So we go back to Tesla. There is no doubt that some plant food, such as oatmeal, is more economical than meat and superior to it in regard to both mechanical and mental performance. Uh, I remember I was living in, uh, uh, in, um, in Sacramento, and I had a chance to meet an old lady. She was 84, and the first time she went to the, she went to the doctor because she had some pain here on the left shoulder. Uh, and uh, the doctor says, so what do you need? Well, I feel some pain here. Have you ever been to the doctor? No. So how old are you? 84. So what do you expect? She says, I, I don't want to have uh, to feel pain. So what is your diet? And the old woman says, all my life I ate oatmeal in the morning. <laughs> she never been to the doctor until the age of 84. She had oatmeal in the morning and she was very poor in you know, in fats and so on and so forth. So it is true that you can have plant food such as oatmeal that is more economical than meat and much more healthy. Uh, um, I will go to take a statement from one of the most translated uh, authors of the, of the world uh, in the person of Ellen G. White. Those who eat flesh are but eating grains and vegetables at the second hand, for the animals receive uh, receives from these things the nutrition that produces growth. The life that was in the grains and vegetables passes into the eater. So basically what we do, we eat, we receive it by eating the flesh of the animal. How much better to get it, it direct by eating the food that God provided for us, uh, uh, for our use. So it is, it is amazing how the world is coming back to a perspective that has ab been abandoned in the act of creation. Sin changed the world. Uh, back to Nikola Tesla um, again, one more time. Such food, moreover, taxes our digestive organs decidedly less and making us more contented and so uh, sociable, produce an amount of good difficult to estimate. So vegetarian lifestyle, it's a, a, it's a, it's a, it's a, a principle that will make you happy and not miserable. Uh, somebody asked me a question once, uh, says, hey, if you eat only bananas and oranges, do you think that you don't go to the cemetery? I said, yes. So what's the point? If everybody dies, wh what is the difference? How, 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 how much, uh, what would be the difference uh, or what will make um, the difference if you eat what I don't eat or you eat vegetarian and I am eating something else and at the end of the day we meet at the cemetery, what is the problem? But it's a, pro it's a difference because if you live uh, according to the principles of God, when you go to the cemetery, you lived a life that is not miserable. But if you have a, a wrong principle, a wrong diet, you get sick and all your life, you drag your life through medication and pain and sorrow, and that's not life. So quality at the end of the day is the difference between a vegetarian lifestyle and someone who eats everything. Quality of life. And yes, we will meet at the cemetery, but even there when we meet, we have a difference because the conscience is pure and a relationship with God is different. One thing is to meet at the, at the, at the, at the cemetery with an unreconciled relationship with God, and another thing is to meet God at the cemetery with a conscience that is clean and purified by the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, basically, uh, Solomon, who did everything possible, he says, better is the dry morsel and quietness therewith than a house full of sacrifices, meat in translation, with strife. So people say, well, it doesn't matter how much barbecue you eat and drinking wine and so on and so forth, if in that house is not peace. And um, in the view of these facts, every effort should be made to stop the wanton cruel slaughter of animals, which must be destructive to our morals. Like Tolstoy, <laughs> uh, Nikola Tesla has the same standpoint that has to deal with morality. Now, when we go to Isaiah 22, verse 13, uh, we see here that even clean meat, uh, it is a problem when God tells you or invites you to fast. And behold, joy and gladness, slaying oxen and killing sheep, eating flesh 
and drinking wine. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we shall die. So you see, even this moment when God is inviting us to fast and pray and to have an empty stomach to, in order to understand the concept of the scripture, uh, it's important. If we despise this concept, I think that that will be a problem between us and uh, God. Now, going to Thomas Edison, vegetarianism has a powerful influence upon the mind and its action, as well as upon the health and vigor of the body. Another testimony that uh, supports the concept of uh, Proverbs 15, uh, verse 17, where Solomon says, Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stelled ox, sold ox and hatred therewith. So you can have meat and wine, but if you don't have peace, and here you have two sections if you see. Better is a dinner of what, everybody? Of herbs where love is. So here in this Bible verse, you can see the association between a vegetarian lifestyle and love, okay? Um, going back to Thomas Edison uh, that warns humanity, until we stop harming all other living beings, we are still savages. You know, so I don't know exactly if we agree with him or not, but this is his statement, and I think that is, it's important to have this uh, uh, declaration in our context. Now, I'm going a little bit farther to George Bernard Shaw. Uh, it's an English philosopher in England, a very, very powerful statement. As long as people will continue to take animals' life, feeding themselves with their flesh, on earth will ever be war. I was back in Romania in 1991, when the, the, uh, uh, the, the war with Iraq began. And uh, we, I saw in the news, in the TV, that uh, this gentleman, uh, his name was Saddam Hussein, and he was feeding uh, the soldiers, the Iraqi soldiers, with raw meat. And I said, well, why, why does he do that? And uh, then uh, there were some explanations that he had a doctor that is an advisor of Sa Saddam Hussein. And he said that the doctor told him that if you feed the soldiers with raw meat, they will lose the concept of fear. So basically the, 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 the soldiers will be so wild that they will ignore any risk. They will go even in front of the bullets because they, have, they lost that uh, um, uh, element of estimating risk estimating uh, 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 threat and danger. So I did associate the idea that when you have a specific diet, you are more lenient to engage in violence and arguments. Going uh, back to this, a dinner of herbs where love is, than a stall ox and hatred therewith. Now, I don't know exactly if you heard about uh, um, uh, Albert Einstein. But Albert Einstein was a vegetarian too. And he says, so I'm living without fats, without meat, without fish, but I'm feeling quite well this way. It always seemed to me that man was not born to be a carnivore. You know, it's interesting how he uh, perceived life. But now we go a little bit in the history uh, and discuss a little bit about the food of the giants. The food of those people that lived almost 1,000 years. And uh, the scripture says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 29, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of the earth, and every tree in which is the fruit of, uh, of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. This was the beginning. This was the beginning of creation. So when God has designed the world, the, the Lord had created a balance in the ecosystem. You know, so when he finished this, he says, everything is very good. What did God achieve by giving the animals grass and giving the man fruits? Is this, look at the balance. You see, the animals are a uh, quadro. They are, they have the food uh, probably, accessible. let's, accessible. They have the food uh, probably uh, uh, 20 or two foot, two feet away from their mouth because they walk in quadro, you know, they have the food right available to their mouth. Men is walking, it's a bipad, yes, and he, huh? 
Yeah, uprightly, yeah. And he can take the fruit from his hand. The same distance of food for men was the same distance from the mouth of the lion uh, to the grass, which shows that God had created a balance in an ecosystem. Uh, the animals will not eat men. Men will not eat animals. This is the plan of God. It was no violence. It was no bloodshed. But once again, what is the title of our subject? Sin changed the world. So this, this balance has been destroyed by what? By sin. Now, Leonardo da Vinci, one of the most extraordinary artists in uh, Dark Ages, makes a statement that, uh, okay, so he has talent, yes? And he says, I have from an early age observed to use of meat. And the time will come when men such as I will look upon the murder of animals as they now look upon the murder of men. Wow, this is a very... Uh, can this be supported by the scripture? What do you think? You know, and I want to share an experience. Uh, 34 years ago, I became vegetarian. And I have to tell you, I ate any kind of meat in my life. And when I decided to become a vegetarian, I fasted for three weeks. I was fasting, praying, specifically dedicating time to the Lord to open... Um, to help me understand, Lord, do you, do you want to become a vegetarian? Is this something that you recommend to me for my uh, uh, good Christianity? And guess what? After three weeks, I kneeled down, I prayed, and I opened the Bible. And from the entire Bible, it opened in Isaiah 65, verse 3. And this statement here, uh, made by Leonardo da Vinci, is reflected in Isaiah, I'm sorry, Isaiah 66, verse 3. This is the Bible verse that the Lord shared with me after three weeks of fasting and praying regarding the, my lifestyle, my future lifestyle. And, and the Bible says, He that kills an ox is as if he slew a man. Bloodshed. So here is the equality. And when you look to the, what Da Vinci says, you know, and time will come when men such as I look uh, w uh, uh, upon the murder of animals as they now look upon the, uh, the murder of men. Now, is this statement supported by the scripture? Yes. He that kills an ox is as if he slew a man. Almost copy-paste from well, uh, only the, the, the scripture, Isaiah 66. Isaiah, as a prophet, lived uh, way before Leonardo da Vinci. So I would say that the Bible did not copy the intelligence and the brilliance of Leonardo da Vinci. It's the opposite. Leonardo da Vinci was impressed by the words of the scripture, eventually. Now we go to Greeks. Uh, Greek philosophers will always blame for liberalism, progressism, and destruction of religion. Yet I want to tell you something. The Greek philosophers did have a lot of wisdom uh, to share with the world. And let me, let me point to Pythagoras. Oh, my fellow men, do not continue to poison your bodies with such a repulsive food as flesh. I mean, this is, this is the guy that knows mathematics, yes? And uh, this is a statement. But now, when you look to uh, uh, the most translated author after the scripture, uh, you have the same similar situation. Few can make the belief that it is the meat that have eaten which has poisoned their blood and caused their suffering. People don't real, even realize that a certain lifestyle can poison and destroy their life. So, Edgy White says, which has poisoned their blood and caused their suffering. Now, when you go to Pythagoras, he says the same. Uh, continue to poison your bodies with such a repulsive uh, uh, food as flesh. Do you see the, the coherency of great men and women of the world they have presented to humanity a better version uh, in a sense plato uh, he has uh, uh, plato's republic he's uh, summarizing the ideal uh, ideal uh, diet and he presents here of course they must have uh, relish salt and olives and cheese and they will uh, bail roots and herbs such a country people prepare for dessert we shall give them figs and uh, pies and beans and so on and so forth so he's recommending in the second book of Republic, of uh, the Republic, uh, that a vegetarian lifestyle, I know that some of us don't eat cheese, but for his, for his perspective at that time, he was vegetarian, he was abho uh, abhorring or abstaining from uh, killing animals for diet. Uh, so that was his presentation in the Republic, Book 2, page 372. Now, I do have a dialogue, though, uh, between Plato and Glaucon. 
uh, in uh, the same um, the same uh, book uh, number two, uh, Plato's Republic book uh, number two, and they were discussing that inviting people to eat uh, uh, to eat uh, meat it would produce a more uh, social stress fight and uh, gluttony and at the end of the day war which means that uh, it they are basically in the same page with uh, George Bernard Shaw. Now, when we go to Constant Alexander the Great, uh, he imposed the denial of flesh eating before the fight. So all the Alexander the Great uh, um, uh, soldiers, they were eating uh, uh, veg uh, grains. They will have grains in their pocket and they will eat that while they were marching. They did not eat meat, wh meat while they were fighting because they knew that the body would be more vigilant, more, um, more elastic, and, and have that, this uh, uh, athletic performance. Uh, in the time of Caesar, soldiers were complaining when they were fed with uh, flesh meat. It says, we, we don't want flesh. Give us grains, the Roman soldiers. And obviously, the gladiators were called barley men. <coughs> the gladiators were eating barley, and they were fighting with the beasts. So you see, it is there a, a, a way of understanding that uh, a specific lifestyle as a vegetarianism, it's very, very important. Now, I would like to go uh, with a short list. Uh, you bear with me a few minutes. Uh, performance in the world of modern sports. Uh, Robert Chick is the confounder of G. Vig, uh, uh, Vag, uh, uh, Corvelli's uh, based vegan group and former board member. He was an uh, organic athlete in Northwest uh, so on so forth in Portland. He was a great man. He, he did not eat any uh, meat, any dairy, nothing. Just strictly uh, vegan diet. And he was performing. Now, this is the most powerful man in the world. He is a vegan. Uh, Patrick uh, 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 Bemo uh, Nian. Uh, I think that he is born in, um, uh, beside Turkey, by Turkey, but Armenia, Armenia. Thank you, Armenia, yes. So the guy is absolutely vegan, and he became the most powerful man in the world. Wade Lightheart, the same thing. He became a, a, a bodybuilding uh, worldwide champion. Now, when you go to uh, Dave Scott, uh, was vegan when he won the Hawaii triathlon called the Iron Man. Six times, six times. Uh, we cannot say Edwin Moses, a plant-based diet, worldwide champion, 400-meter fence, without ever losing a race. He was uh, having this. Uh, Murai Ro uh, Rose, I think his name was Tarzan in the movie. You know, one of the best uh, swimmers of the world become a celebrity, uh, and uh, he was practicing this diet. Uh, Carl Lewis um, was a vegan too, the greatest athlete uh, that stepped on this field. He won... Ten titles, uh, Olympic titles, and uh, 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 nine of them were gold. And he was, you know what they were giving to him? Six months smoothies. Smoothies. He will eat six months smoothies. He will not eat any barbecue, any hot dog, any, you know, smoothies, and he will be like a bullet, yes? Uh, Gil Olinekova, first class marathon athlete, did the Boston Marathon after seven days of water fasting. Imagine. And I have names, uh, Martina Navratilova, uh, Scott Jurek, uh, uh, cyclist, uh, David uh, Zambrixa, uh, again, a uh, plant-based uh, diet, fighting, Matt Dazzling, born January uh, 2, 1980, retired American ma martial art, he was a vegan. Then Walter Killer Kowalski, he was a vegan too. And then we have the gorilla. Where does she get the protein? Do you know she has uh, the gorilla has around 200, uh, 200 kilograms roughly the, the 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 strength and she can lift ten times her body weight two tons two tons two thousand kilograms mean mean four thousand pounds roughly so gorilla lifts ten times the body weight of her uh, so where does she get the protein she eats leaves and some fruits eventually. So you see, the, what God has created is good. Look what Romans, Apostle Paul, reconfirms that. Romans 14, 21. It is good neither to eat flesh nor to drink what? Wine. Why? Nor anything whereby the brother stumbleth, stumbleth or is offered, offended or is made weak. So if it's good not to eat meat and drink flesh, uh, drink wine, why we should not do it? 
It's an advice. It's a recommendation of the scripture, correct? Uh, James uh, chapter 4 verse 17 says, Therefore, to him that knows to do good and doesn't do it, to him is sin. So when Apostle Paul tells you and tells me, it's good neither to eat flesh nor to drink wine. If it's good, why I should not take that advice? And, and the Bible says, if you know to do good and you don't, that's a sin counted to you. Now, in the kingdom of God, because everybody wants to go home, everybody wants to go home in the kingdom of God with the Lord, I'm just looking for that moment. And Isaiah 11, 5 to 9, and Isaiah 25, and so on and so forth, we have few declarations that deserve a little bit of respect. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, in the and the calf and the young lion and the uh, fatling together, a, a little child shall lead them, and the cow and the bear shall feed their uh, young ones, shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. So you see, uh, when we talk about the kingdom of God. Uh, basically, what God tried to do with humanity in these 6,000 years is to bring us back to Eden. Correct? This is what he wants to do. Hey, guys, if you want to go in the kingdom of God, I have to bring you back to the original principles. We have 274% or whatever in the world uh, uh, rate of divorce. Why? How can be 200 over 200 over 100 uh, uh, percent uh, rate of divorce? Why? Because you married, you divorce, you marry again, you divorce again, you marry and whatever. You, I don't know how many times. And and the disciples were so tempted to buy every year a new BMW, and they were asking Jesus, "Hey Lord, is that true that we can divorce our wives?" Because Moses gave us a letter of divorcement, and Jesus says yes. Moses gave you a letter of divorcement because of the hardness and the stubbornness of your hardness of your heart. But in the beginning was not so. Which means that Jesus takes the minds of the disciples back to Eden. There are a few principles in the Garden of Eden. Marriage, Sabbath, diet, a proper diet. All these things uh, have been abandoned by humanity. Why? Because sin changed the world. But uh, to have that statement that a lion shall eat straw like an ox, what a change, what a transformation will God do with, 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 with those that will be in heaven? And if the, the lion will suffer a, 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 a change in behavior, do you think, or transformation, do you think that the men and women will not ch have a, suffer a transformation? Not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. So there will be no barbecue, no smoking marijuana, no drinking alcohol, no drugs, no vaccines, no nothing. Yes? It will be pure society, correct? No sickness. no sickness, yes. So now when we go a little bit to life expectancy, this is my final point if you wish. Uh, what is the difference between life expectancy in the terms of vegetarianism versus, versus um, uh, other lifestyle? Here you have lion versus elephant you know it is very sad lion is the king of the forest the king of the jungle correct and yet has a very very short life why because the diet is specifically oriented on on uh, um, hunting correct meanwhile the elephant where does he get the protein you know and he lives more now when we go to humans here you have the concept before the flood before uh, in the civilization of antediluvians Antediluvians, the highest stock rank, 1,000. Nobody touched 1,000 years per se. But uh, definitely you can see how the size of their bodies and the lifestyle has changed gradually. And if you see now how people start to uh, rent or borrow the meat-eating lifestyle, they decreased in size, in mental and moral performance, and they, uh, they increased the violence. And that's why uh, those giants that lived before the flood, they were men of honor that had so much uh, uh, brilliance uh, in, in, their, in their life. And the flood destroyed them because their brain was working malefically uh, against God. Now, meat eating shortens life span. Spawn. The, the Maasai, this is a tribe in East Africa, subsists principally on milk, blood, and meat. 
They believe all cattle belong to them. They are considered elders at the age of 30. Their average life uh, expectancy is 48 years. Eskimos, those people that live in Alaska, whatever, uh, it's a Greek Indian word, uh, literally meaning eaters of raw flesh. Eskimos call themselves the Inuit. They eat a lot of raw fish, seal, whirlers, but live an average short life, 35 years. So that, that shows that lifestyle has something to do with, 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 uh, with the quality of life and the length uh, of life. Now, harmful components of uh, um, uh, uh, meat, you know, and you have a lot of uh, things to digest. So I don't think that we need all these things uh, to introduce in our body when we eat that meat, you know. Uh, here are the two, <laughs> um, like the horse, humans are herbivores, not carnivores. You see the, the dentistry, and, and you see the, the, the fact that we were designed by God to be vegetarians, obviously. When you go to what is happening in the, in the fish, people, have you ever seen people say, hey, brother, I understand that you don't eat meat, but you don't eat even fish? Have, have, you, have you met people that address you? Well, look, the, the, the problem is we have so much pollution in the world that all the misery and the junk that is coming from the factories, going in the soil, in the rivers, they go in the ocean. The fish is the most miserable creature, in f unfortunately. They found in the fish mercury, lead, DTT, U.S. prohibited uh, substance, chemical substance in 1972, 10 million bacteria, grams. Uh, it's crazy when you look to pesticides. This is what the fish, poor fish, uh, swallows because of humanity. So when you ask, uh, when you receive the question, oh, brother, neither fish? I think that the fish is the most toxic uh, uh, type of uh, food that we can have, unfortunately. So conclusion, Proverbs 23, 20. And I tell you, Solomon ate everything. He did, this man did what you never imagine a human being could do. And yet, when he got old, when he got old, he says, be not among, what? Wine, uh, bibers, beavers, among riots, uh, riotous, eaters of flesh. So conclusion, be not among these people. Try to have a lifestyle that recommends your Christianity, recommends your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Be not a man uh, amongst the, those that are wine drinkers, and flesh eaters. And uh, as a conclusion, this is the food for the giants. This is what the Lord gave us to eat, a healthy lifestyle, a vegetarian lifestyle, that will give us a concept of what is the power of transformation and to go back to Eden. I want to propose to you something, because we have a lot of uh, community services. Is that true? Mikey presented a lot of, we do pie, we do this for the people. But uh, I would like to, uh, for future reference, maybe we can do something like we have done in Colorado probably three, four years ago. I'm not quite sure. Uh, I've been with uh, Dr. John Baer, uh, with uh, his daughter, Valerie, and Alex, his uh, son-in-law. And in two hours and a half, we prepared the breakfast that is the best in the world, the oatmeal, yes? So we did, uh, we did um, uh, uh, carrot uh, juice. Uh, we prepared the breakfast. You, you like the colors, correct? And this is the way that we were preparing the, the oatmeal that is boiled, and then we have some, uh, some uh, uh, cherry sauce in top of the bananas. And at the end of the day, we had this wonderful uh, table for the people that came to enjoy life. Do you find that attractive? Back to Eden, back to Eden. You see, in every fruit, God has put a color. And in every color, God tells you, I love you, my son. I love you, my daughter. Yeah, so this is, this is the way that God expresses his joy and love for you and for me by following him in a, in a meticulous lifestyle that will not give him any benefit, but will give you the benefit of living healthy. So here is the finished product. And uh, at the end of the day, we had this. In two hours and a half, four people, we put together 
for those that came there, uh, this. It, it, it looks brilliant. It's possible, yes? Everything what God says in the Genesis chapter 1, verse 29 and verse 30. So here we are and people enjoying from this healthy food. So I do believe that what David said, it is very true. And that's my final statement. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and herb for the service of men, that he may bring forth food out of the earth. Psalm 104, verse 14. You may say, yes, but how about sacrifices? How about uh, meat eating in the Old Testament? Yes, it's true. God gave allowance, but because of the stubbornness of our hearts, but in the beginning was not so. So I do believe that the Lord will give us wisdom to understand that life is precious and the style we choose in eating, sleeping, working, thinking, it is very, very important and will give us the benefit of happiness here and in the kingdom of God. May the Lord bless us, brothers and sisters. Hopefully this uh, 360 degrees uh, perspective in the world of great men and of the scripture help us to understand what is the best for our body and for our mind. May the Lord bless us richly. Amen. Amen.